The coma mocked the human ships as primitive junk heaps, but their laughter turned to screams as Earth's outdated fleet tore through their blockade like an avenging swarm. Captain Roger Wells stood on the bridge of the battered ISS Defiance, knuckles white as he gripped the railing. On the view screen, sleek alien warships surrounded Earth, their energy shields shimmering. The Defiance's hull was pitted with scorch marks from past battles, a testament to the ship's resilience. The screen flickered, and a reptilian face appeared, smirking. Captain Wells, Admiral Niran hissed, your species' pathetic vessels are no match for Komar might. Surrender now, and we may spare your lives. Wells glared back, jaw clenched. Underestimate humanity at your peril, Niran. We don't surrender, not now, not ever. Then you will die, Niran snarled. When we seize Earth, we will strip it bare until nothing remains but dust. The transmission cut out. Wells turned to face his crew, a mix of grizzled veterans and fresh-faced recruits. They all looked to him, fear and determination warring in their eyes. Earth's survival hung in the balance. The alien ships were stronger, faster, better armed. The odds were stacked against the human defenders. You all know what's at stake. Our families, our homes, our entire way of life. Those Kilmar bastards mean to bomb us back to the Stone Age and pick the bones of our world clean. Wells paced the bridge, meeting each crew member's eyes in turn. The Komar think their tech makes them invincible, but they're about to learn that human ingenuity and courage count for a hell of a lot more than their fancy ships. Here's what we're going to do. As Wells laid out his audacious battle plan, fierce grins spread across the faces of the Defiance's crew. The Komar were in for a nasty surprise. Humanity wouldn't go down without a fight. It was time to take the battle to the enemy and show them what humans were really made of. The Defiance's engines roared as Wells punched in the coordinates for the Komar supply depot. A handful of other human ships fell in formation behind the Defiance, their hulls battle-scarred, but their crews determined. They were the best of the best, hand-picked by Wells for this crucial mission. As the depot came into view, Wells barked orders to his crew. All hands to battle stations. Prepare to engage the enemy. The human ships swooped in like avenging angels, catching the Komar off guard. Plasma cannons and missile barrages tore into the depot's defenses, sending Komar ships spiraling into oblivion. The Komar scrambled to mount a counterattack, but the humans pressed their advantage. Amidst the chaos, Wells led a strike team aboard a boarding craft. They breached the depot's hull and stormed inside, gunning down Komar soldiers with ruthless efficiency. Wells hacked into a terminal and downloaded schematics for advanced Komar tech. Energy shields, weapons, propulsion systems. This intelligence could turn the tide of the war. But as Wells and his team raced back to the Defiance with their prize, a massive Komar warship dropped out of hyperspace. It was Niran's flagship, bristling with guns. The flagship opened fire, its powerful cannons ripping into the Defiance's already battered hull. Sparks flew on the bridge as consoles exploded. Shields down to 15%, a crewman shouted. We can't take much more of this. Wells gripped the arms of his chair, his face grim. They had to get this tech back to Earth, no matter the cost. He made a split-second decision. Ramming speed, Wells roared. Divert all power to engines and forward shields. The crew looked at him in shock, but obeyed without hesitation. The defiance lurched forward picking up speed as it hurtled towards Niran's flagship. At the last second, Wells activated the experimental Komar energy shields they had just stolen. The two ships collided in a blinding flash of light. The shields held, absorbing the worst of the impact, but both vessels were left crippled, locked together in a twisted embrace of metal. Aboard the flagship, Niran pulled himself to his feet, snarling in rage. He ordered his soldiers to storm the Defiance and slaughter the humans, starting with Wells. Fierce firefights erupted in the corridors of the entangled ships as humans and Komar clashed in brutal close-quarters combat. The screams of the wounded and dying echoed through the metal halls. Wells and his team fought like demons, Komar blood splashing the bulkheads. In the end, the humans cut their way free and escaped with the stolen tech, leaving a trail of Komar corpses in their wake. 
Niran howled with humiliated fury as the Defiance limped away, vowing bloody vengeance. Back on Earth, human scientists worked around the clock to reverse-engineer the Komar technology. Factories churned out upgraded weapons and shields to outfit Earth's battered fleet. Wells pushed his crew harder than ever, drilling them mercilessly on the new tech. They all knew this was just the beginning. The Komar would retaliate swiftly and without mercy, but for the first time since the war began, humanity had a fighting chance. A chance to take the war to the Komar and reclaim their destiny. Earth's leaders met in urgent council. The successful raid had bought them precious time and resources. Now they had to use them wisely. They pored over star maps and strategy sessions late into the night. Alliances were forged, battle plans drawn up. Planetary defense systems were bolstered and more ships constructed. Humanity was gearing up for total war. Wells looked out over the mustering armies and armadas, his jaw set with iron resolve. No more scraping by on outdated tech and desperate tactics. No more fighting for mere survival. It was time for Earth to take the offensive. Under Wells' leadership, the reinvigorated human forces prepared to launch an all-out assault on the coma to drive the invaders from human space and take the fight to the enemy's doorstep. The time had come for humanity to show the galaxy what it was truly capable of. The final battle for Earth was about to begin. Aboard his battered flagship, Niran paced furiously, his claws gouging deep grooves into the deck. The stench of burnt circuitry and spilled blood filled the air. He snarled at his cowering subordinates, spittle flying from his jaws. Those filthy apes dared to steal our technology. They think they can best the Komar? Niran slammed a fist into a bulkhead, denting the metal. Gather every ship, every soldier. We will descend upon Earth and burn it to cinders. I want Wells' head on a pike. The Komar fleet surged towards Earth, a seething swarm of warships bristling with weapons. Niran grinned savagely as the blue-green world grew larger on the viewscreen. Soon it would be nothing but a smouldering ruin. As the Komar Armada entered Earth orbit, alarms blared. The human fleet materialized out of the void, blocking their path. At its head was the Defiance, its hull gleaming with newly installed Komar shielding. Wells stood tall on the bridge, his eyes hard as flint. Niran, Wells broadcast to the Komar flagship. You wanted a fight. Well, now you've got one. The two fleets collided like dueling titans, the void lighting up with the flash of a thousand guns. The upgraded human ships tore into the Komar with devastating effect, their reverse-engineered weapons chewing through the enemy's defenses. Niran watched in disbelief as his ships fell one by one, outmatched by human ingenuity combined with Komar firepower. He pounded a console, roaring with rage. But the Komar were far from beaten. Though outgunned, they still had the weight of numbers on their side. For every ship the humans destroyed, two more took its place. Slowly, inexorably, the tide began to turn against Earth's defenders. On the Defiance's bridge, warning lights flashed red. We're losing ships fast, an officer reported. The Komar are pressing their advantage. We can't hold them. Wells gripped the arms of his command chair until his knuckles turned white. Desperation sharpened into cold resolve. He leaned forward. Initiate Spectre Protocol. From the heart of the human fleet, a dozen ships shimmered and vanished as their experimental cloaking devices engaged. Undetected, they slipped past the Komar battle line and fell upon the enemy's rear echelon. The cloaked ships targeted the Komar supply vessels and communication relays with ruthless precision. Antimatter warheads reduced them to plumes of radioactive dust. The Komar assault faltered as their logistical train collapsed and their fleet coordination dissolved into a chaotic melee. Wells saw his chance. All ships attack, drive them back. Like wolves culling stragglers from the herd, the human fleet hit the Komar's weak points again and again. Formations crumbled, ships scattered, the invaders' seemingly unstoppable advance ground to a bloody halt. Niran howled with mingled rage and disbelief as he watched his glorious conquest unravel. As much as it galled him, he barked the order to retreat. 
the Komar ships limped away, leaving Earth's orbit littered with the broken husks of their fallen. Aboard the Defiance, the bridge crew erupted into ragged cheers. They clasped hands, pounded each other's backs, tears of relief streaming down soot-stained faces. Wells sagged back into his chair, exhausted but triumphant. We did it, he said softly. We beat them. But this war is far from over. Niran will be back and he'll be hungry for revenge. On Earth, in hidden bunkers and command centers, human leaders debated their next move long into the night. We should press the attack, Wells argued via Vidlink. Take the fight to the Komar, burn out their forward bases and shipyards. As long as they can threaten Earth, we'll never be safe. Others counseled caution, insisting that Earth's defenses had to be the priority. The debate raged back and forth with no clear consensus. Then came the intelligence reports, grim tidings from deep space listening posts. The Komar were gathering their strength in the Korak system, marshalling a war fleet twice the size of the one that had just attacked Earth. A cold dread settled over the Council. It was all too clear what the Komar's next target would be. The only question was how to meet this new threat. As arguments and recriminations flew, Wells clenched his jaw. One way or another, humanity would have to find a way to win this war. The survival of Earth, of the human race itself, hung in the balance, and Wells would be damned if he let it fall. In the council chambers on Earth, Wells slammed his fist on the table. We have to strike now while they're still licking their wounds. Intel shows the Komar massing ships and resources in the Korak system. It's now or never. The admirals and politicians argued back and forth, some advocating caution, others calling for blood. But Wells' impassioned plea won out. The Defiance would lead a task force to Korax, to destroy whatever the Komar were building there. The human ships dropped out of warp at the edge of the system, engines thrumming with barely contained power. On the view screen, a massive structure hung in space, dwarfing the Komar fleet that surrounded it. It was a space station, bristling with gun emplacements and shimmering with energy shields. Wells's eyes widened. With a station like that, the Komar could strike at Earth with impunity. It had to be destroyed at any cost. As the human ships swept in, guns blazing, Wells gathered his most trusted fighters. They boarded a captured Komar shuttle and rocketed towards the station, slipping through the chaos of the space battle. They landed in a hangar bay, blasting the Komar guards before they could sound the alarm. Wells led the way, pulse rifle in hand, as they raced through the labyrinthine corridors. They planted explosive charges at key structural points, the power core, the shield generators, the main computer banks. But as they were setting the final charge, alarms blared. Komar soldiers poured into the room, weapons spitting plasma. At their head was Nira and eyes alight with rage. Wells, he roared, I'll flay the flesh from your bones. Wells dove for cover as his team laid down suppressing fire. Bullets and energy beams crisscrossed the room. Wells and Niran fought their way towards each other, blades and fists clashing in a whirlwind of savagery. Wells ducked a slash that would have taken his head off, then rammed his knee into Niran's gut. The Komar warlord grunted, then head-butted Wells in the face. Blood spurted from Wells's nose. They traded blows back and forth, smashing each other into consoles and bulkheads. The room shook as the battle outside raged on. Finally, Wells swept Niran's legs and pinned him to the deck, a combat knife at the alien's throat. Niran snarled defiantly, but Wells knocked him out cold with an armored fist. Charge is set, one of Wells' men yelled. Thirty seconds! They ran, hauling the unconscious Niran with them. They barely made it to the shuttle before the explosions began, tearing through the station's superstructure. The shuttle blasted free, racing away as the station tore itself apart from within. Secondary explosions ripped through the Komar fleet as debris pummeled their ships. The human task force seized the advantage, targeting the Komar command ships and supply vessels. Komar ships broke formation and fled as their chain of command dissolved. On the Defiance's bridge, Wells allowed himself a tight smile as he watched the Komar retreat. 
They had bought Earth precious time. But the war was far from over. As the battered human fleet limped back to Earth, victorious but bloodied, Wells stood on the bridge of the Defiance, staring out at the blue-green world he called home. They had struck a crushing blow against the Komar, but at a heavy cost. The Defiance's hull was scorched and pitted, her decks echoing with the moans of the wounded. When they landed, the people of Earth greeted them as heroes, cheering and weeping as the warriors descended the ramps. Wells accepted their accolades with a heavy heart, knowing that the respite would be all too brief. His fears were soon confirmed. Grim-faced intelligence officers pulled him into a briefing room, their voices urgent. Niran is alive, they said, pulling up grainy images of the battered Kumar warlord. He's gone rogue, taking a faction of hardline warriors with him. They've seized control of a secret research base hidden in the Kuiper Belt. Wells leaned forward, eyes hard. What are they doing out there? The officers exchanged glances. We believe they're developing a new weapon, something big, possibly a planet killer. Wells' blood ran cold. He knew with utter certainty that if Niran succeeded, Earth would be his first target, revenge for his humiliation at Wells' hands. He stood, his chair scraping harshly against the deck. We have to take that base out now. It may be our last chance to end this war once and for all. The room erupted into a cacophony of argument and debate, but Wells overrode them all. I'll lead the assault myself. Gather every ship and soldier you can spare. We leave at once. As a ragtag fleet of human ships, cobbled together from the survivors of a dozen battles, raced towards the distant asteroid field, Wells poured over the scant intelligence they had on the base's defenses. The Defiance shuddered as it dropped out of warp, the twisted rocks of the Kuiper Belt looming in the viewscreen. Somewhere among those tumbling asteroids lurked Niran's fortress, shielded and armed to the teeth. All hands battle stations, Wells ordered, his voice like iron. Assault teams prepare to deploy. The fleet moved forward, the smaller rocks bouncing off their shields like hail. Then from behind a massive asteroid, Komar ships appeared, a swarm of angry hornets out for blood. Energy beams and missiles crisscrossed the void as the two fleets clashed. The Komar ships were older models, not as advanced as those Wells had faced before, but their crews fought with the desperate ferocity of cornered animals. As the space battle raged, assault shuttles launched from the human ships, darting and weaving through the chaos. Wells was in the lead shuttle, a pulse rifle across his knees, his face a mask of grim determination. They landed in the base's hangar with a bone-jarring crunch, the doors blasting open before the Komar defenders could react. Wells was first out, rifle spitting death as he charged forward. The base's corridors were a labyrinth of choke points and ambushes, the Komar warriors fighting with fanatical zeal. Wells and his soldiers battled through, inch by blood-soaked inch, leaving a trail of alien corpses in their wake. At last they reached the central lab, a cavernous space dominated by a looming metal spire. Niran stood at its base, his elite guard arrayed around him. The Komar warlord snarled when he saw Wells, drawing a jagged blade. Today you die, human, he hissed, and your world dies with you. Wells raised his rifle. Not if I have anything to say about it. The two forces collided in a whirlwind of savagery, energy beams and razor-sharp talons seeking vulnerable flesh. Wells fought his way towards Niran, alien blood spattering his armor. Then disaster. A stray shot hit the spire, sparks cascading across its surface. A deep, ominous hum filled the air, rising quickly to a deafening shriek. The weapon! Niran shouted, his eyes wide with sudden fear. You fools, you've doomed us all! Wells stared at the spire, realization dawning. They had only moments before the device detonated, vaporizing the base and everyone on it. He looked at Niran, saw the same understanding in the alien's eyes. In that instant, the hatred between them seemed petty, meaningless in the face of annihilation. We have to shut it down, Wells yelled over the rising din. Quickly, before it's too late! Niran hesitated for a split second, 
then nodded curtly. Together, the two former enemies raced to the spire's control panel, their fingers flying over the alien controls. The shriek built to an unbearable crescendo, the spire vibrating like a plucked string. Wells gritted his teeth, sweat pouring down his face as he fought to make sense of the Komar systems. Beside him, Niran snarled curses in his own tongue, clawed hands a blur. With a final desperate keystroke, the noise cut off, the spire falling dark and silent. Wells and Niran collapsed against the panel, gasping for breath, the sudden quiet ringing in their ears. Around them, humans and Komar alike lowered their weapons, staring at each other in shock and wonder. They had stared into the abyss together, and somehow, against all odds, they had pulled back from the brink. But even as relief washed over him, Wells knew that this was not the end. The war still raged beyond the base's walls, and there would be hard fighting and painful sacrifices ahead. Yet in this moment, he felt a flicker of something he had never expected to feel for a Kyomar. Respect. He and Niran had been forged in the same crucible, and though they might never be friends, perhaps they could find a way to be something other than enemies. There was still a long road ahead, and Wells knew he would walk it to the end no matter the cost. For Earth, for humanity, he would fight on. But for now, he allowed himself a moment to breathe, to savor the fact that against all odds, they had survived to fight another day. As the smoke cleared over the ruined Kilmar base, Wells watched the human soldiers lead a shackled Niran into a waiting shuttle. The once proud alien warlord stumbled, his scales scorched, and his eyes hollow with defeat. In the days that followed, Earth's leaders argued fiercely over Niran's fate. Some demanded his execution as a war criminal. Others saw him as a valuable bargaining chip. But Wells had a different idea. He strode into the detention block where Niran was being held, ignoring the glares of the guards. Niran looked up as Wells entered his cell, his expression wary. Come to gloat, human, Niran rasped, his voice rough with exhaustion. Wells shook his head. I've come to talk about ending this war once and for all. Niran let out a bitter laugh. You've beaten us. What more do you want? Peace, Wells said simply. An end to the bloodshed on both sides. We've proven we can work together, Niran. We stopped that weapon together. We could do so much more if we weren't trying to kill each other. Niran was silent for a long moment. Then slowly he nodded. I'm listening. Over the next hours they talked, arguing and debating, but also finding common ground. Wells spoke of the toll the war had taken on both their peoples, of the chance for a better future. Niran spoke of honor, of the warrior's code that had driven him his whole life. In the end, Niran agreed to a truce. Wells arranged for him to speak to the remaining Komar leadership, hammering out the details of the agreement. The Komar would withdraw from human space, ceasing all attacks. In return, Earth would share some of the technological advancements they had made during the war. Diplomats would be exchanged, trade routes established. As the Komar ships began to depart, Wells met Niran one last time in the hangar bay. The alien leader stood tall, his bearing proud despite his injuries. You are a worthy adversary, Captain Wells, Niran said formally. I did not believe humans capable of such strength, such tenacity. I was wrong. Wells inclined his head. I could say the same of you, Admiral Niran. You fought with honor and bravery. Without your help we would all be dead now. They clasped forearms a warrior's salute. Then Niran turned and boarded his shuttle, the hatch sealing behind him. But even as the Komar ships dwindled into the distance, Wells could feel the tension simmering aboard the Defiance. Many of his crew were unhappy with the truce, distrustful of the aliens who had caused so much death and destruction. We should be pressing the attack, one grizzled marine growled, not letting them slink away to lick their wounds, Similar sentiments were spreading through the fleet, Wells knew. It would take time and careful diplomacy to truly end the hostilities. And on the Komar side, too, there was dissension. Hardline factions saw the truce as surrender, a betrayal of their warrior heritage. As Niran's shuttle docked with the Komar flagship, he was met by a delegation of grim-faced officers. 
The Council of Warlords demands an explanation, one of them said coldly. You had victory in your grasp and you threw it away. For what? The word of a human? Niran met his accuser's gaze unflinchingly. I did what I judged necessary for the survival of our people. The humans are stronger than we realized. Continuing this war will only bring more death. The officer sneered. You've grown weak, Niran, soft. You dishonor the Komar with your cowardice. Clawed hands dropped to weapons, tensions rising to a boiling point. Niran knew he would have to act decisively to keep the fragile peace intact. As the fragile peace took hold, Wells found himself thrust into a new role, diplomat. He and his crew were tasked with overseeing the delicate exchange of technology and establishing formal relations with the Komar. It was a far cry from the adrenaline fueled battles he was used to, but Wells knew that this work was just as crucial for ensuring a lasting peace. But the calm didn't last long. A series of explosions rocked both human and Komar outposts, the work of extremist factions who saw the truce as a betrayal of their respective species' interests. Wells narrowed his eyes as reports of the attacks flooded in. This was no coincidence. Someone was deliberately trying to undermine the peace process. Wells launched an investigation, determined to root out the culprits behind the attacks. His search led him to whispers of a shadowy figure known as the Broker, an arms dealer who had been fueling the conflict with weapons and technology. The more Wells dug, the more he realized that the Broker had been playing both sides, manipulating the war for his own profit. The Komar warrior was initially reluctant to help, still bristling at the idea of working with a human, but Wells convinced him that the Broker was a threat to both their peoples. Grudgingly, Niran agreed to a temporary alliance. Together they followed the Broker's trail, plunging into the seedy underbelly of the galaxy. They navigated treacherous black markets and fought off attacks from the Broker's goons, slowly piecing together the arms dealer's network. As they closed in on their target, Wells and Niran stumbled upon a shocking truth. The broker was no ordinary criminal, but a rogue Komar warlord named Zektar, and he wasn't working alone. Zektar had allied himself with a human extremist group led by a ruthless fanatic named Elias Kane. Kain and his followers believed that humanity was destined to rule the stars and that the Komar should be crushed under their boot. They saw the peace treaty as a weakness and were determined to shatter it by any means necessary. Wells felt a chill run down his spine. If Cain and Zektar succeeded in their plan, the galaxy would be plunged back into war, more brutal and bloody than ever before. There was no time to lose. Wells and Niran raced to the extremists' hidden base, a heavily fortified bunker deep in uncharted space. They fought their way inside, bullets and plasma bolts flying as they battled through Kane's fanatical guards. In the heart of the base, they confronted Kain himself, flanked by Zektar and his Komar loyalists. The extremist leader ranted about human supremacy, his eyes gleaming with madness. Zektar snarled, energy blade in hand, eager to spill human blood. Wells and Niran stood shoulder to shoulder, weapons raised. They were outgunned and outnumbered, but they wouldn't back down, not with the fate of the galaxy at stake. The air crackled with tension, neither side willing to make the first move. Wells' grip tightened on his rifle, his heart pounding in his ears. He glanced at Niran, saw the same determination etched on the Komar's scaly face. Then all hell broke loose. Kane barked an order, and his men opened fire, laser beams stitching the air. Wells and Niran dove for cover, returning fire as they went. The room dissolved into a chaotic melee of flashing blades and chattering guns. Wells lost track of how long they fought, lost in the primal rhythm of combat. He and Niran moved as one, covering each other, cutting down extremists left and right. But Kane's forces kept coming, fanatics willing to die for their twisted cause. Just as it seemed they would be overwhelmed, Wells spotted an opening. Kane was barking orders from a raised platform exposed. Wells lined up his shot, finger tightening on the trigger. But before he could fire, Zektar leapt in front of Kane, energy blade flashing. The Komar warlord charged at Wells, roaring a battle cry. 
Wells barely managed to parry the blow, the force of it sending shocks up his arm. They traded blows back and forth, human strength against Komar ferocity. Out of the corner of his eye, Wells saw Niran locked in his own duel with Cain's lieutenant. Zektar pressed his attack, forcing Wells back. The human commander gritted his teeth, muscles burning with effort as he fended off the Komar's furious onslaught. He couldn't keep this up forever. Desperate, Wells fainted left, then dove right. Zektar's blade slashed through empty air. Wells rolled, came up firing. His shots caught the warlord in the chest, sending him stumbling back. Seizing his chance, Wells charged. He tackled Zektar, sending them both crashing to the ground. They grappled, rolling across the blood-slicked floor. Wells managed to pin the Kumar, one hand around his throat, the other pressing a gun to his temple. Call them off, Wells growled. It's over! Zektar glared at him with pure hatred, but as laser fire continued to fill the air and his forces fell one by one to Niran's deadly aim, he saw the truth in Wells' eyes. Snarling a curse in his native tongue, the warlord barked a command. Slowly, painfully, the fighting ceased. Cain's extremists lowered their weapons, realizing their leader had abandoned them. Niran stood over Cain's body, the human fanatic's throat a ruined mess. Wells hauled Zektar to his feet, binding his hands. He met Niran's gaze across the room, seeing the same mix of exhaustion and grim satisfaction he felt. They had won. The broker's network was shattered, the conspiracy exposed. The fragile peace so recently forged had weathered its first true test. But as Wells looked around at the carnage, the bodies of friend and foe alike, he knew their work was far from over. The road to a lasting peace would be long and treacherous, beset by those who clung to old hatreds. He and Niran would have to be the watchmen, the guardians of this new era, for if they faltered, if they let the embers of war reignite, then all they had fought and bled for would be for naught. Wells straightened his shoulders, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. For the sake of both their peoples, for the dream of a galaxy at peace, he would not yield. He could not yield. The future was theirs to shape, and Wells would see it through no matter the cost. He and Niran dragged Zektar and the surviving extremists back to their shuttle, the first step on a long journey to justice. As they lifted off, Wells allowed himself a moment to breathe, to feel the weight of what they had accomplished, but only a moment. There was still work to be done, a peace to nurture and protect. He glanced at Niran, saw the same understanding in the Komar's eyes. They were warriors forged in the crucible of war. But now they would have to be something more. Diplomats, peacekeepers, leaders. It would not be easy, but nothing worth doing ever was. Wells leaned back in his seat as the shuttle tore through the void, carrying them towards an uncertain future. A future they would face together, human and Komar, united by a bond that had been forged in blood and fire. The stars beckoned a galaxy awaiting their touch, and Wells would not rest until that galaxy knew true and lasting peace, until the scars of war had faded and a new era of prosperity and cooperation could begin. It was a daunting task, a burden that weighed heavy on his shoulders, but as he looked out at the infinite expanse of space, Wells felt a flicker of hope. They had come so far against such impossible odds. Who was to say what miracles they might yet achieve if they had the courage to try? The shuttle flew on, carrying the fate of billions in its hold, and Wells knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, he would meet them head-on, with all the strength and determination of the human spirit. For the sake of all he held dear, he would not falter, he would not fail. The future was theirs, and Wells would see it through to the end. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, for in the end peace was worth any price, and he would pay it gladly a thousand times over for the chance to see that dream made real. With the damning evidence secured, Wells and Niran made their way back to Earth. Determined to see justice served, they marched into the halls of power, presenting their findings to the shocked authorities. The broker and his co-conspirators were swiftly arrested, their assets frozen and their networks dismantled. As the trial began, 
the entire galaxy watched with bated breath. The proceedings were broadcast on every news channel, the shocking details of the conspiracy laid bare for all to see. Wells and Niran took the stand, recounting their harrowing journey to uncover the truth. In the courtroom, the broker sat stone-faced, his eyes cold and calculating. His human and Kyomar collaborators shifted nervously in their seats, the weight of their crimes heavy on their shoulders. The prosecution presented a damning case, detailing the intricate web of deceit and manipulation that had prolonged the war and cost countless lives. They showed how the broker had played both sides against each other, stoking the flames of conflict for his own gain. As the evidence mounted, the defendant's guilt became undeniable. The jury deliberated for mere hours before returning with their verdict, guilty on all counts. The courtroom erupted in cheers as the sentence was handed down. The broker and his accomplices would spend the rest of their lives in the galaxy's most secure prison, their schemes finally brought to an end. Wells and Niran were hailed as heroes, their names spoken with reverence across the stars. They had risked everything to bring the truth to light, to forge a path towards peace between their peoples. But even as they basked in the glow of victory, a new shadow loomed on the horizon. They were approached by a mysterious figure, a representative of an organization known as Phantom Watch. In a clandestine meeting, the agent revealed a chilling truth. The broker was merely a pawn in a much larger game. A powerful and ancient race, the Vortex, had been manipulating the conflict from the shadows, using the war as a distraction while they pursued their own sinister agenda. Phantom Watch had been monitoring the Vortex for years, trying to unravel the secrets of their plans. They had uncovered whispers of an artifact of immense power, the Nexus Key, said to grant its wielder control over the very fabric of reality. If the Vortex were to obtain the Nexus Key, they would be unstoppable. They would sweep across the galaxy like a plague, enslaving or exterminating all who stood in their way. The agent looked Wells and Niran in the eye, his expression grave. We need your help, he said. You've proven yourselves to be the best of the best. Join us. Help us find the Nexus Key before the Vortex do. The fate of the galaxy depends on it. Wells and Niran exchanged a glance, the weight of the decision heavy on their shoulders. They had fought so hard for peace, had sacrificed so much. Could they really dive back into the fray? into a war even more dangerous than the one they had just ended? But in their hearts they knew they had no choice. They couldn't stand by and watch as the Vortex threatened everything they held dear. They had to act, had to fight. The agent smiled, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. He led them deep into the heart of Phantom Watch's headquarters, to a room filled with beings from a dozen different species, each one a master of their craft. Welcome to the team, the agent said, gesturing to the assembled operatives. These are your new comrades, the best and brightest from across the galaxy. Together you will scour the stars, follow the clues, and find the Nexus key before the Vortex can get their claws on it. Wells and Niran stepped forward, ready to embrace their new mission. They knew the road ahead would be fraught with danger, that they would be tested like never before. But they also knew that they would face it together, human and coma, united by a bond forged in the heat of battle and tempered by the pursuit of justice. As they looked around at their new teammates, at the determined faces of those who would fight by their side, Wells and Niran felt a flicker of hope. The odds may be stacked against them, but they had faced impossible odds before and emerged victorious. They would do so again no matter the cost, for the sake of the galaxy, for the future of all species, they would not fail. The quest for the Nexus Key had begun, and Wells and Niran were ready to meet it head-on. They checked their weapons, steeled their resolve, and prepared to plunge into the unknown, into a battle that would decide the fate of the universe itself. Wells, Niran, and their Phantom Watch comrades raced from planet to planet, star system to star system, chasing down every lead on the Nexus Key's whereabouts. They braved the toxic atmosphere of Zelos Prime, dodging geysers of corrosive gas as they battled Vortex soldiers in the ruins of an ancient civilization. On the jungle moon of Avar, they hacked their way through dense foliage 
and fended off swarms of venomous insectoid creatures, all to reach a hidden temple filled with cryptic carvings that pointed the way to the next clue. Each world brought new dangers, new challenges. In the frozen caverns of Rikos they fought against vortex drones that adapted to their every tactic. In the blistering deserts of Nakshir, they raced against time to solve a series of ancient riddles before a colossal sandstorm buried the secrets forever. Through it all they uncovered more and more about their enemy, intercepted transmissions and decoded files, painted a chilling picture of the Vortex's beliefs and goals. This was no mere alliance of convenience, but a fanatical cult that saw itself as the rightful rulers of the cosmos. Snippets of overheard dialogue spoke of the Nexus key in reverent tones as a holy relic that would confirm their ascendancy. They're insane, Wells growled as he pored over a translated Vortex text. They actually believe they're destined to rule the galaxy. Nira nodded grimly, and with the Nexus key they might have the power to do it. The trail finally led them to Azrak Tau, a teeming metropolis world in the heart of the Orion Arm. Towering skyscrapers pierced the smog-choked sky, and the streets swarmed with life from a thousand worlds. And somewhere in that urban labyrinth, the Nexus Key waited. But as they prepared to make planetfall, new intel came in that turned their plans upside down. The Nexus Key wasn't in some remote warehouse or underground vault. It was in the city's central museum, on display for all to see. Wells frowned at the museum schematics, his mind racing. Maybe, but it's also our best chance. We can't let this opportunity slip away. And what about the civilians, Niran pressed? The museum will be packed if a firefight breaks out. He let the implication hang in the air. Wells' face hardened. We don't have a choice. The Nexus key is too dangerous. We have to secure it, no matter the cost. Niran slammed a fist on the table, his eyes flashing. No, I won't be party to a massacre. Not again. There has to be another way. The room erupted into argument, teammates taking sides, tensions that had been simmering for weeks boiled over. Old wounds, old resentments, threatened to tear them apart. Wells raised his voice above the din. Enough. We'll get the key, but we'll do it smart. We go in quiet, surgical. Get in, get out, minimize collateral damage. He locked eyes with Niran. But if it comes down to the Nexus key or us, I won't hesitate. None of us can. Too much is at stake. Niran held his gaze for a long, tense moment. Then slowly he nodded. All right, he said. We do it your way, but the second, the instant it goes sideways, we pull out. Agreed? Wells nodded curtly. Agreed. They spent the next day planning, preparing, going over every detail. They would infiltrate under the cover of a local festival, using the crowds to mask their approach. Each team member had their role, their task. They drilled until they could do it in their sleep. When the fateful hour arrived, they moved like ghosts through the chaotic streets. Niran and his team set up a perimeter, watching for Vortex agents. Wells and the others slipped inside the museum, bypassing security systems with ease. But as they entered the Nexus Keys exhibit hall, they found themselves face to face with a figure out of nightmare. It was a Vortex champion, a bioengineered monstrosity bristling with grafted weapons and armor. Its four eyes glowed with malevolent intelligence as it unsheathed a crackling energy glaive. Pathetic vermin, it rumbled. You dare to defile this sacred place. The key is the Vortex's birthright. Prepare to die. Wells and Niran charged as one, weapons roaring. The champion was fast, inhumanly so, parrying their shots with blurring speed. It lunged at Wells, glaive slashing. Wells rolled, the blade missing by inches. He came up firing, but the champion's armor shrugged off the hits. Niran flanked the beast, hammering at its weak points. It whirled to face him and Wells pressed the attack. They worked in tandem, covering each other, probing for an opening. The champion's tail lashed out, catching Niran across the chest. He flew back, hitting the wall with a crunch. Wells roared in anger, unleashing a storm of fire. The champion staggered under the onslaught, but kept coming. Its glaive sliced Wells's gun in half. He drew his combat blade, parrying the champion's strikes. Sparks flew as they clashed, human strength against engineered savagery. 
Niran struggled to his feet, shaking off the blow. He snatched up a fallen vortex weapon, a vicious halberd crackling with disruptor energy. With a battle cry, he leapt back into the fray. Together, they drove the champion back, forcing it away from the Nexus Key's display case. It lashed out in desperate fury, but they pressed on, united in purpose. Niran's halberd sang, Wells' blade flashed. The champion's armor cracked, Ikor oozing from a dozen wounds. With a final desperate lunge, Wells drove his blade into the creature's eye. It howled, thrashing in agony. Niran's halberd took it in the throat, silencing it forever. As the champion fell, Wells and Niran stood panting, blood and sweat mingling on their skin. Around them alarms shrieked and lights flashed as the museum's security finally responded. Grab the key, Wells said. Let's get out of here. Niran nodded, shattering the display case with a swing of his halberd. He reached in, lifting out the Nexus key. It was a small thing, deceptively plain, but it thrummed with an inner power that raised the hair on their necks. This had better be worth it, Niran said, tucking the key into his pack. Wells clapped him on the shoulder. It will be. Now move. We've got a galaxy to save. They burst out of the museum into the pandemonium of the streets. Overhead, Vortex ships were already descending, weapons hot. The battle for the Nexus Key had only just begun. Wells keyed his calm. All teams fall back to the extraction point. We have the package. Repeat, we have the package. As they raced through the city, dodging energy blasts and crumbling masonry, Wells allowed himself a tight smile. Against all odds, they had done it. The Nexus key was theirs. But even as elation surged through him, a cold certainty settled in his gut. The Vortex would never stop hunting them now. They had denied the enemy their prize, and they would pay the price. But as he glanced at Niran running beside him, as he thought of his team and the countless lives hanging in the balance, Wells knew it was a price he was willing to pay. They all were. The Nexus key was the key to everything, and they would fight to the last breath to keep it from the Vortex's clutches. With a final desperate blow, Wells drove his blade into the Vortex champion's chest. The creature let out a gurgling roar, Ikor spurting from the wound. It thrashed, clawing at Wells, but Niran was there, his halberd slicing through the champion's neck in a spray of viscera. The champion collapsed, its head rolling across the floor. Wells and Niran stood panting, covered in blood and gore. Around them the bodies of their fallen comrades lay still, their sacrifices etched into the very stones of this cursed place. Wells staggered to the pedestal where the Nexus key glowed, pulsing with an otherworldly light. He reached out, his fingers closing around the artifact. It was warm to the touch, almost alive. But as he lifted it from its resting place, a deep, bone-shaking rumble filled the chamber. Dust sifted down from the ceiling, and the walls began to shake. The whole place is coming down, Niran shouted over the growing din. We have to go now! They raced for the exit, leaping over rubble and dodging falling chunks of masonry. They burst out into the open air, only to stop dead in their tracks. Hovering above them, blotting out the sky, was a vortex fleet. Thousands of ships, each one bristling with weapons, all aimed directly at them. A hologram flickered to life before them, towering and terrible. It was a vortex, but unlike any they had seen before. It was gargantuan, its skin a mottled grey, its eyes burning with a cold, merciless intelligence. Surrender the key, it boomed, its voice like the grinding of continental plates, or be annihilated, you have no other choice. Wells looked at the key in his hand, then at the fleet above. He knew with a cold certainty that if the Vortex got their hands on this artifact, the galaxy would fall, trillions would suffer, whole species would be extinguished. He turned to Niran, his expression grim. Take the key, get it back to Phantom Watch, I'll hold them off. Niran's eyes widened. Wells, no, that's suicide. It's the only way. Wells said, his voice steady despite the fear churning in his gut. If they get the key, it's all over. Everything we've fought for, everyone we've lost, it will all be for nothing. Niran looked like he wanted to argue, 
but the determination in Wells' eyes stopped him. He nodded, his jaw tight. It's been an honor, Wells. Wells clasped Niran's hand, feeling the strength and loyalty in the Komar's grip. The honor was mine, Niran. Now go. Save the galaxy. Niran turned, barking orders to the remaining team members. They hesitated, looking at Wells with a mix of awe and grief, then followed Niran, disappearing into the ruins with the Nexus key. Wells turned back to the Vortex fleet, a grim smile on his face. All right, you bastards, he muttered, readying his weapons. Let's dance. He charged, firing his jetpack and soaring towards the nearest ship. Vortex cannons swiveled to track him, energy beams sizzling through the air. He dodged and wove, his weapons spitting death. He rammed into the ship's hull, tearing through metal with his augmented strength. He ripped out control panels, severed power lines, turned the ship's own weapons against its fellows. The ship exploded, the blast throwing wells clear. He careened through the void using his jetpack to stabilize his tumble. Another ship loomed before him, and he leapt towards it, guns blazing. Again and again he struck, a dervish of destruction, leaving a trail of shattered ships and screaming void in his wake. The Vortex fleet reeled, thrown into chaos by this single, unstoppable human. But there were too many, their weapons too powerful. Beams seared Wells' flesh, projectiles shredded his armor. He fought on, ignoring the pain, the warning alarm shrieking in his helmet. He had to buy Niran more time, just a little more. A lance of pure energy speared him, burning through his chest. He gasped, tasting blood, his vision blurred, his limbs turning to lead. As consciousness faded, he saw the Vortex flagship looming over him, its cannons glowing with charged death. He snarled a final defiance, raising his fist in one last gesture of indomitable human will. Then the flagship fired and Wells knew no more. A sunbright explosion consumed him, a final searing testament to his sacrifice. Light years away, Niran flinched as if struck, feeling Wells's death like a blade in his heart. Around him, the remnants of Phantom Watch bowed their heads, grief etched into their faces. But there was no time for mourning, not yet. They had a mission to complete, a fallen comrade's final wish to honor. They flew on, the Nexus key secure in their hold, the weight of the galaxy's fate pressing down upon them. They had lost friends, brothers, a legend, but they would not let those sacrifices be in vain. They would fight on in the name of the fallen, in the name of all those who still lived and dreamed and hoped. They were the galaxy's last line of defense, and they would not falter. As Earth came into view, a blue-green jewel amidst the infinite black, Niran made a silent vow. He would see Wells' dream of a united galaxy realized. He would carry on his friend's legacy, no matter the cost. For in the end, that was all any of them could do. Carry on and remember and hope that their struggles would one day lead to a brighter dawn. The shuttle touched down, and Niran stepped out into the light of a new day, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. For Wells, for the galaxy, for the dream of peace, he would not yield. He would not rest. The fight was far from over, but as long as beings like Wells and Niran drew breath, there was still hope. And sometimes, hope was the most powerful weapon of all. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.